Senate President Craig Blair. Craig, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Before we get going, you try to jack me up with those intros each time, don't you? (laughs) Did it work? (laughs) No, it didn't work. You did a good job of explaining it. And all what uh, what people aren't talking about is the 59 days, how smooth the Senate ran. (laughs) I think we I think we talked about that uh, on 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 three or four of those days. uh, As a matter of fact, Uh, well, I don't get to hear it since I'm down here working. So, Uh, but uh, it's it was a great session and everything. And it's a shame uh, Senator Carnes had to show he's uh, behind there. But Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is what it is. Things were handled appropriately, and we. Went on and conducted business very well the rest of the day. I want so to paint the picture. Was he physically removed? Well, not nobody played hand okay. on him. But we have a sergeant armed, and uh, the sergeant armed escorted him out. And then the next day, uh, he was back in his seat. Uh, but you know, being on the last day uh, to see the president or, or the speaker has the power of recognition. And so that means that you don't have to recognize them at all. And so what can happen is if you give the floor over to somebody, well, they can talk until the end of the night. That has happened. Vic Sprouse did that one time uh, whenever I was in the House of Delegates and he was in the Senate. And uh, Ray Tomlin, then the president of the Senate, recognized him. He talked to midnight. And you didn't have to give it up. And so I'm very cognizant of that. There's a lot of bills out there that need to get across the finish line that people care about. And I wouldn't have recognized uh, Senator Carnes on the last day unless I was fully aware of what he was going to do so that uh, there, you, you can't have that kind of behavior. If, I, if I'm a senator, how do I request to be uh, recognize? Do I raise a hand? Do I push a button? Uh, do, you, do, 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 lots of times I can, I'll, I'll be able to tell because they'll have their microphone out of the holster on the, the next to their, their chair or whatever. And but uh, you stand, uh, and then that's how you begin to be recognized. You don't holler or anything like that. You just stand up while you're holding your microphone, and that's indication enough most of the time i can see the microphone sitting on their desk and uh i i can anticipate who needs to be called on every now and then i mess up but not too often well as a thriller writer i'll tell you it's much more dramatic to actually shout out and have the confrontation than it is just to wait to be recognized (laughs) that's what the whole point was is to put on a show and uh, go out and, and call me corrupt. And I can tell you right now, I'm a lot of things. I'm not corrupt. Uh, and there was a lot of accolades uh, afterwards. This was the best session uh, since I've been involved in politics. We did a lot of amazing things. You know, there's a lot of, of people, including ourselves, that were concerned that of with 31 Republicans and just three Democrats, that they would turn on each other. But that morning meeting at 7.30 in the morning where all the senators got together and we'd go over our agendas for the day, we'd go over what was going on in committees. To a greater degree, everything ran very, very, very smoothly. Uh, and, and we worked with the minority, too. Go take a hard look at that. I haven't – normally I have uh, um, the minority bills compared to the majority of uh, put together, but it's still, we're still sifting through all that. Probably in the uh, next couple of weeks, I'll have that work done. And I can tell you, but I don't even pay attention to who bill sponsors are. That's irrelevant. It's about the quality of the bill. Is it a good idea for West Virginia or is it a bad idea? And the good idea is we do everything to get them across the finish line so that we can move West Virginia forward. Craig, there's a lot of good stuff that happened. In, in fact, uh, there are three major uh, items that got handled in this 60-day session, which I thought would be way more than you folks would be able to tackle, but you did. And I want to get to that soon. But first, I want to go back to this Carnes issue because Senator Robert Carnes sent out emails, including one to me, accusing you of making exhaustive use of duty days and abusing them to the point where you could be paid between 150 and $180,000 in annual compensation when the standard salary for those elected is now $20,000, $21,000. Uh, 
And this, I'm not sure how many people this went out to, but I know it went out to me. And again, basically accusing you of abusing your duty days, which I suppose duty days are the days you work when you're not in a formal legislative session. Yeah, Mike, folks done the same thing. And uh, here's the way I look at it. Uh, anybody that wants to come in, they can uh, look at the key card records. They can look at everything. I will, the payroll, the, the, uh, everything about it, I welcome them to come see it. Now, here's the, the, the story of Craig Blair's life. I have not been home since the beginning of the session for the 60-day session. Everybody else travels home, visits their family, and all that. But there was work to do during the 60-day session. But to, even to this day, right now, I haven't been home because there's still work down here to be done. Now, I, do, I normally work. Uh, I drive down on Sunday mornings. I normally leave at 10 o'clock to uh, noon and then drive down on Sundays. Then I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, I leave somewhere around the time of 1 o'clock, give or take two or three hours on that. And then I talk on the phone the whole way, still conducting business. Sunday, not as much so. That's giving me a little bit of time to listen to an audio book or something like that. And I don't want it to talk business. But here's what you're getting. And I don't make $150,000 a year, not even close to it. I lose about $1,000 a month being here. But according to the, uh, them, and I say them, my t my payroll office, I made $64,000 last year. Now, to, to being the Senate president comes with extra pay on that. But here's what you got out of it. Uh, I was the first contact for Nucor Industries. It's over $3 billion of investment. Commercial metals, green energy, form energy, Berkshire Hathaway. Over $10 more billion of investment are in the works for the state of West Virginia. Okay, now, as me as being a, a senator and the Senate president, five years of budgets completed in the 60-day session. Five years. That wasn't done before that. That cost extra money to be there. Craig Blair started that. Flatline budget, four years in a row of that. $760 million in tax cuts. Four years of state employee pay raises of $1.6 billion this coming year or this current year of surpluses, $370 million to roads, not to mention $2.6 billion of roads to prosperity. Now, I didn't do that, uh, but I supported it, and I was part of the team that got that done. Now, this is not all being Senate president, but a lot of it is. So t this job is a full-time job uh, because I'm also the lieutenant governor. And the lieutenant governors in most other states make way more on this. And West Virginia is only one of two states where the lieutenant governor and the Senate president is the same title. But I work closely with the economic development. And then this is not to throw the staff under the bus, uh, but whenever you uh, – you know how it is for businesses when the, the cat's away, the mouse will play, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well – down here now, the West Virginia Senate runs like a well-oiled machine. Everybody's working around the, the, the throughout the year, preparing for the sessions, and that's the next thing. It takes a lot of work to get these bills together, and you have these meetings of that where you get the stakeholders in to be able to work out the deals and try to be able to get things done. Hell, uh, for the, to think about uh, just the tax uh, relief that we did. That was months and months and months in the making last year to be able to get across the finish line for that. And even still, people thought that it couldn't be done. Now, I knew it could, and we did. So I say, personally, it, if I'm making $65,000 a year, down here and doing the job, and I am the first Senate president that has went into this role to make it so that we are singularly focused on making the lives of people in West Virginia better and with job opportunities and educate, better education. You need somebody at, to, to, to driving that train, and, uh, and that's what I'm doing, and I have no regrets for doing it, and the rest of them can just be armchair quarterbacks and cry all they want to. You mentioned you're losing $1,000 a month in Charleston. What did you mean by that? 
Well, to, 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 here's the, the expenses that are associated with it. I've got to abate $1,200 a year in dry cleaning, for example. And so you got to dress appropriately. And so the food, I'm not out. Last night, I left the Capitol at 830 and went to Taco Bell. I'm, I'm sorry, Wendy's and got a taco salad and, and went home, and that's what my dinner was. So everybody thinks that you're living the life of the rich and famous. It's anything but that. There's all these expenses that are associated with it. And sure, you get $131 a day, but you got housing. Remember, I'm not from the Eastern Panhandle, or I'm from the Eastern Panhandle. And, and, and that's important also. Uh, to be able to recognize that some of what they're talking about is the travel back and forth where you get paid to travel uh, to come back come back and forth. You get mileage, I think, and right? Yeah, and do, do you not want a Senate president from the Eastern Panhandle? For, I'm the first one ever to be from there. Most of the time, it's of people are located relatively close to Charleston, and then they have a second job. I've taken this job seriously. It shows the work's getting done, and I'm very, very, very proud of it. Let's talk about some of that work that got done and begin with the tax cut because uh, I know this is something that's going to work on a triggering mechanism as to future tax cuts. Can you explain what the triggers will be and how they are enforced, Craig? Great question. You start off with one that it went through so many iterations of it. The only thing I can tell you on that one at this point in time, of and, and my chief counsel's not here, I'd call her up and put her on the phone for you. Um, the triggering mechanism, to, no, I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. Uh, because I'm going to screw it up if I do. What I was worried about, and I let my finance chair manage it, is one that we wanted one that would trigger, but that <clears throat> that would, would have the possibilities of triggering, and but make it so that it would not. I'm not saying it right. It, you had to hit the sweet spot. You didn't want it to trigger every year, just because. You had X amount of money that came in, mm -hmm. uh, or that it never triggered. You wanted to have a true reflection of the economy in the state of West Virginia. This trigger did that, of uh, but I can't remember the exact details That's fine. of what that trigger was. Well, let me ask you this then: it, Let's say all the criteria is met to to hit the trigger. D does that then require a vote of the legislature to enforce the trigger, no. or is automatic? Is it automatic? It's automatic. Oh, they, they, that, that's, that, that's automatic. And, and, Rob, I apologize about that. I knew you were going to answer this question, and I wanted to review it of last night. But like I said, I didn't get done doing other work till 830. It's okay. And I, 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 I will get you that information as I normally do whenever I hang up, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to have that tomorrow to be able to tell the, your listeners. Awesome. On what's going on. The tax so. cut itself, is it retroactive to January 1, or does it kick in July 1? January 1. So it's retroactive? Yes. Okay, next question has to do with, and we got a, a version of this from uh, Delegate Jason Barrett yesterday, and I got a conflicting version from a delegate previous to that. I'm sorry, Senator Jason Barrett yesterday. And a, a delegate gave me a conflicting version of that previously. In regards to the rebate for your personal property, Craig, how is that going to be if, uh, handled administratively in terms of how I get my money back? Do I, do I pay my car tax first and then get the exact same check back? Or on my taxes, does my state tax liability get offset by my rebate that uh, I would get from the personal property tax? And then there's a net tax effect at the end of it. Okay. First of all, it's 100% on automobiles, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then 50% for businesses on their equipment, machinery, and inventory as long as it's under a million dollars uh, of those assets. Now, how you go about getting this is that you pay your taxes to the counties. They get their, their – you, you, just like you normally do right now. Now, when you go to file your taxes, 
then you will actually take that receipt, put that number in the line, and you'll get a refundable tax credit back. In other words, you'll get that money back. Say if the state uh, owed you $500 back, but you paid $350 uh, in personal property tax on your automobiles, then you would get $850 back on your refund check from the state. Now, let's say that you've got – you don't get – that you don't owe any taxes in any way, then you would get the $350 back. But it will be handled through the tax department. It's less than ideal, but remember that Amendment 2 did not pass, uh, where we tried to make it so that – and the voters uh, turned that down. But this is a way of demonstrating uh, to the people of West Virginia that that's a 100% re uh, reduction of a tax uh, in the state, but it's in, you could call it a rebate, but it's not. It's a refundable tax credit. Gotcha. That sounds like a lot of work. It, it, it will require additional funding or additional people to take care of. Is that also covered within the, the bill? And most of the work is going to be put upon the taxpayer. I'm not a fan of it, but it's still better uh, than the alternative of on this. Look, Oh, especially for the small mom and pop businesses out here, uh, this is a regressive tax uh, that deters economic development. This is one of the reasons why the Senate was adamant uh, about of staying the course for this, because we wanted to make sure that we continued the momentum forward on growing our state. Uh, so, the, for, for the tax department, it's it's not all that much. Uh, that's involved with that uh, because you'll be able to attach a copy of your tax returns. Most of them are available online if somebody wanted to verify it, uh, and then you put it on your taxes, uh, you know, on your tax form. It just requires putting another line on the tax form, and we're good to go. Can you take me behind the scenes of the personal income tax or the whole tax reduction negotiation for a long time you know the the house passed their version on the first day right after the governor's state of the state address and then y'all in the senate kind of went quiet for a long time it was 30 45 days it felt like um not really releasing anything and and the impression from where i was sitting was there was a lot of enmity and and bad thoughts about you know among y'all and then suddenly bingo it's kind of this really nice compromise came out what what transpired behind those closed doors? Well, first of all, the, 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 most of it is uh, assumptions and rhetoric uh, and, and a, a little bit of jockeying for position uh, amongst the members uh, on what they want. And that's a normal process. It happens on almost every bill on trying to do it. For God's sake, you know, the, I wanted a bill this year that made it so prescriptions on your eyeglasses of, would uh, be for five years uh, instead of one. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, uh, but but that didn't even make it across the finish line because the House didn't want to do it, uh, and the House delegates was adamant. They passed out that tax bill that would have been $1.5 billion uh, in two years uh, coming out of our revenues, but then they had almost $2 billion worth of expenditures. Of that they were they passed over to the Senate, of and the governor had to increase the revenue estimates just for them to be able to do the budget. Of I think it was seven hundred and fifty eight hundred million dollars. You can't have that. Uh, this has been the concern all along of uh, on the Senate part that if we're going to do tax reductions, we want to do tax reductions in such a way that it. Does we do not come back and have to say well we're going to have to increase taxes or 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 to, to take some of the instead of giving twenty one percent uh, we're we're only going to do fifteen percent nobody wants to do that we want to be able to make sure that we stay the course and moving forward in something that is affordable and that the people and predictable that the people can do now to get back and to answer your question on that there was negotiations going on the whole time of on the inside but first of all and and this is the the leadership of Craig Blair I said wait a minute we got to really, really, really determine what we've got to spend. 
And when I went through all that, well, the numbers come back to being exactly what I was talking about before when we were talking about the, uh, Amendment 2 on the personal property tax. we hate, You just do the math on it. Of I don't have my paperwork in front of me here, uh, but I've mentioned it on your show over and over and over uh, that it's uh, – Flatline budgets created 138 and 138 for the first two years of the flatline, 147, 147 for the second two years, and that come out to being. Uh, I'm rounding these numbers off. Don't hold me exactly to it because I don't have them right now in front of me, and uh, I'm sitting here shifting. Wait a minute. I do now. Uh, 138, 138, so that's 276 million. And then 148, 148, so that's 572 million. But the governor's budget this year was not a flatline budget. It was two, spent $248 million more than what the previous year was. So that's not a flatline budget. So we subtracted 148 million off for growth. And so what that the overspend was actually. A hundred million dollars. So I have to subtract that off of that five hundred and seventy-two million dollars. So that gave me a number of four hundred and seventy-two million. That was the true flatline budget amount when you looked at it, this budget. Then I got ready and went over and said, "Okay, we're um, we're not using severance tax at all on, in this equation. Zero, and that's making up about forty-five percent." of the excess revenues that we have in our budget right now. The, it's in severance tax could drop out at any given point in time. Senate said no, no, no calculation of severance tax. But we did give on uh, the personal income tax and sales tax, which on month seven, and that was 59% of the way through the year, 181 million and 121 million respectively. So you add that three hundred and two million back that gives you seven hundred and seventy four million. That was the full elastic amount that we could do for tax reduction. Period. Can't do any better. And so uh a ten percent reduction is two hundred and seventy eight million dollars of on that. And so in the personal property tax of uh, the way we calculated it was 160 million. Now we believe it'll be a little bit less than that. And then the personal property tax on equipment, machinery, and inventory, with a one million dollar cap, is 35 million. And for the veterans on their homestead, uh, that was four million dollars. So we were able to do this for a cost of. $760 million, I believe it was, so we were like $14 million underneath. Other people's floated numbers around, but I'm telling you, this is the numbers that you work from. These, This is what works. And once we identified what we could spend, then it allowed us to go in and figure out what we could do and what I could get in the votes for the caucus on how to manage it. And that's exactly what we did. And then we negotiated a little bit. And to, to give you an indication of the degree of negotiations, 21.25%, I think it was, is that we ended up with. It is, yes. Uh, yeah, 21.25, right down to a quarter of a percent. And, and if you don't think that this wasn't the appropriate thing and, and a very important for the state, look right now that for corrections of where there needs to be the uh, Senate passed something that would have cost the state about $8 million uh, to be able to do it. And I think the House was in the $30 million range for being able to address corrections. But that that is something that needs to be done. And there are some things that didn't make it through the session. That was one of them. The governor's talking about it. But I don't know where they're going to find the money at. Okay, the the money's not there because that's base building. There, there, there'll be excess revenues that you could actually do this with, but it, you're much better to use those excess revenues for one-time expenses. And I know right now I'm probably boring the dickens out of your listeners, uh, but this is part of what we do here is trying to get it right for the people of West Virginia so that they don't have to worry about. The roads, the infrastructure. 